Naku Zambula. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. This is a science lesson, key stage 3 for classes 7 and 8. My name is Tashlamo, a teacher of Yang Chingasal Middle Secondary School. Before we begin our lesson, let us run through the lesson objectives. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain reproduction and its types. You should be able to explain reproduction in humans. Identify secondary sexual characteristics of male and female. Explain how reproduction happens in an organism and assess the benefits of sexual and asexual reproduction of a plant. So, before we proceed further, let us all look at the picture here. Just think to yourself, what does this picture signify to you? I'll give you a few minutes to think over. Okay, so this picture basically talks about reproduction. Let us all define what is reproduction. Reproduction is a biological process by which living organisms produce young ones of their own kind. Reproduction is one of the characteristics of all living things. It enables and ensures the continuity of species generation after generation. And reproduction also helps in increasing the population of species. And it acts as a vehicle for organic evolution by transmitting advantageous variations to the offspring. Now, let us look at the types of reproduction. Basically, there are two different types of reproduction. Reproduction can either be sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction. In the sexual reproduction, a new individual is produced by the fusion of male and female gametes. Whereas in asexual reproduction, an organism reproduces without the involvement of the male and female gametes. Now let us look at how humans reproduce. Humans reproduce sexually. It starts with the production of gametes in the reproductive organs followed by fertilization and development of fetus. Human beings are unisexual organisms which means that the male and the female have separate reproductive system. As you grow and proceed further, you can see changes happening in your body and the onset of the sexual maturity in individual is called puberty. Puberty usually starts around 11 to 13 years of age. Puberty is accompanied by the development of secondary sexual characteristics. So now let's look at some of the secondary sexual characteristics in the male. The secondary sexual characteristics in male includes the growth of pubic hair, beard and moustache, deepening of voice, development of muscles and broadening of shoulders. Now that we have looked into the secondary sexual characteristics in male, let us look into the secondary sexual characteristics in female. The secondary sexual characteristics in female includes the enlargement of the breast, high-pitched voice, widening of hips, growth of pubic hair, and the onset of menstruation, which is also known as monthly bleeding. Now that we have discussed about some of the secondary sexual characteristics in both male and female, let us look into how the male reproductive system functions. The male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes, sperm duct, accessory glands, urethra, and penis. A pair of oval-shaped testes are located outside the body sac of a skin called scrotum. And sperms are produced in large number inside the testes. The sperm gets mixed with the secretions from various accessory glands and they are 
carried into the urethra by a pair of long tubes called the sperm ducts. The mixture known as semen is released through the penis into the vagina during sexual intercourse. Now, let's look at how female reproductive system functions. So, a female reproductive system consists of pair of ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and vagina. Ovaries are located in the lower part of the abdominal cavity. Vagina is a muscular tube which receives the sperm during sexual intercourse. Each ovary produces one ovum every month, alternatively and released into the fallopian tube. The fusion of the ovum and sperm, which is known as fertilization, takes place in the fallopian tube. And uterus, which is known as the womb, is a hollow muscular organ where development of embryo takes place. Now that we have discussed about how male reproductive system and female reproductive system functions, let us discuss about how humans reproduce sexually. During sexual intercourse, millions of sperms are deposited into the vagina with the help of, a, of the penis. The sperm travels up the vagina and uterus and reaches the fallopian tube where fertilization occurs. The fusion of the sperm and ovum is called fertilization. It results in the formation of single cell structure called zygote. The zygote then begins to divide and form embryo. The embryo is implanted in the uterus. The embryo starts to grow at a rapid rate by cell division. The walls of the uterus become thick with increased blood supply to nourish the growing embryo. After six weeks, the embryo is called fetus and it takes about 280 days, which is also known as the gestation period for the fetus to develop completely. We have already discussed about how humans reproduce sexually. Now let us discuss about how reproduction happens in the plant. Plant undergoes both sexual as well as asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves the sex cells or the gametes. Gametes are produced in the reproductive parts of the flower. Female and ma male gamete fuse to form a zygote. The zygote undergoes several cell divisions to form embryo which later develops into a mature plant. Now let us learn how plants reproduce sexually. Plants reproduce sexually through the process of pollination. Now can you all think to yourself what do you mean by pollination? Pollination is a process where there is a transfer of the pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma of a flower. Pollination can either be through self-pollination or cross-pollination. Now let me explain with the help of this diagram how pollination is taking place. Just have a look at this picture here. Here you can see the bee which acts as the agent of pollination and here the bee is taking the pollen grains from the anther of the same plant to the stigma of the same plant and the flower is getting pollinated. Next let us discuss how cross pollination happens in the same plant. You can again see here that the agent B is taking the pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower and the flower is getting pollinated. Next, let us discuss how cross-pollination takes place in different plants. So here 
what is happening is the bee is taking the pollen grains from the anther of one flower and taking it to the stigma of another flower of the same species and the flower is getting pollinated so this is what happens during sexual reproduction in plants now let us look at asexual reproduction in plants as i have told you earlier plants also produce sexually as well as asexually so let us look into how plants reproduce asexually what is asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is a kind of reproduction in which there is no involvement of the gametes plant will multiply through vegetative parts such as the root stems leaves and buds this type of asexual reproduction is called vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation now let us discuss the major types of vegetative propagation in plants vegetative propagation can either be natural vegetative propagation or artificial vegetative propagation under the natural vegetative propagation plant reproduces either through roots stems or leaves but under the artificial vegetative propagation it has been influenced by the humans so therefore plants reproduces either through cutting layering or grafting so in this lesson we'll be focusing more on how plants reproduce through the process of natural vegetative propagation so let's discuss how vegetative propagation takes place through stem underground stems that are modified for storage of food have buds and new plants develop from the buds modified stems like tuber bulb rhizomes and rows help the plant to multiply next we also have vegetative propagation by roots the roots also help in the vegetative propagation examples like the sweet potato and dahlia which gives rise to a new plant from their fleshy roots and finally we have vegetative propagation by leaves in plants like bryophyllum and begonia buds are produced on the leaves leaf margins these buds falling on the ground grows into new plants now that you've been listening to me for quite a long period of time let us do some activity so i want you all to explore the following questions so the first question says using the available resources you're going to practice vegetative propagation of a plant by stem roots and leaf make a report of what you did and what you observed next analyze the benefit of sexual and asexual reproduction of plants for farmers in your village with this i come to the end of my lesson thank you for your active participation and i'll see you all in my next lesson stay home stay safe and wash your hands with soap and water thank you